All right, we are live on Facebook. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another night of WCM Interactive. We are glad that you guys have decided to join us tonight. And as always, we do have the Facebook Live up. So if you do not want to join us by uh, Zoom, uh, you can join us on um, Facebook Live. Uh, we are on Facebook Live. Uh, Zoom code. This is going to be a very interactive um, Bible study tonight. It's going to be an interactive. So um, I strongly urge you to get on the Zoom call if you can or are able to. If you don't want to be on the video screen, that's fine. You can um, just be speaking and not be seen. The uh, Zoom code is 810-2249-5270. Again, that's 810-2249-5270. Five two seven zero. So uh, we invite you to come on and join us on tonight as we're going to be uh, talking about spiritual gifts. But before we get started, um, we're going to have Deacon Wise to nine, open us up five, in prayer. Two, seven, no. Again. Deacon Wise. Mm -hmm. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this day, Father God. We thank you for uh, us being able to interact, Father God, uh, on Facebook and on the Zoom Zoom call, Father God, to learn more of you, Father God. Father God, I ask that, that we uh, decrease, Father God, as you increase within us, Father God. Give us ears to hear what you have to say to your people, Father God. And Father God, bless the speaker uh, on tonight, Father God. Allow her to speak a ring of word directly from you, Father God and allow uh, the, the word not to fall on, on um, allow the, the, word, the word not to fall on stony ground, but uh, they take roots in our heart, Father God. Yes, Lord. And we praise you. We give you all the, all the praise and honor in advance. It's in your mighty son, Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 So again, just like I said, this call will be... Um, we are on Zoom, but this is interactive. And part of this interaction is um, you beforehand, um, if you've been following us, you need to complete your spiritual gifts assessment. I posted it on the page, I believe a couple weeks ago. Um, and I, and um, so really it will help if that is filled out. If you have not filled it out yet, it is posted to the page. So you still have time to do it. You can fill it out right now while we're doing the broadcast and see where your spiritual gifts are. Um, they're posted right on the page. Also, if you come on Zoom with us tonight, I do have all the documents on Zoom as well. If you would like uh, for us to email you a copy of those gifts, we could do that as well. But this is going to be interactive because we've been teaching all month long. So now with the teaching, amen, now it's going to be a little application. Amen. Um, yeah. And then I just want to just real, uh, I'll do the announcements at the end. I'll do the announcement at the end. I see that Mother Kitty Wise is watching and Sister Kim Nguyen is watching. Hello. Greetings, ladies. Um, again, if you would like to come on Zoom, the code is 810-2249-5270. Uh, Elder Deborah, if you're on Facebook, if you could drop that in the comments, or I don't know, if, or I can do it. Um, so we're going to get started. We're going to get started. Just with a um, uh, recap, for you guys who have been following us for the last month, we launched our ministry with Bible study. And um, the for the last month, we've been um, teaching on spiritual seeing and hearing, spiritual seeing and hearing. And we have all concluded that now is the time that we need to be using our spiritual senses that God has given us and be able to see and hear in the spirit. Um, and now tonight, uh, tonight's, uh, we're going to call it a little workshop, kind of like team building, helping each other out. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about the importance of why 
Our spiritual senses are key when it comes to the gifts that God has given us. Amen. Because really, you cannot really function at the level that God has purposed you to if you're not hearing and seeing in the spirit, hearing and seeing in the spirit. So um, now we're going to just, we're going to get into it. Uh, I am going to share this. I'm going to, hopefully you guys have completed your spiritual gifts and you are going to share what your top three spiritual gifts are. Before, um, before we uh, have that discussion, we're going to take a look at what the spiritual gifts are. We're going to take a look. Is that all right? Then again, that again is the ones that's watching chance to um, the ones that's watching also have a chance to fill out our spiritual and I am sharing the screen right now I'm going to just read I'm going to do this homework for you to do on your time because you should research and, and study the scriptures based on the gifts that you have identified as you have um, so real quickly, uh, because I can't assume that everybody knows about the gifts. Well, let me just break it down in the simplest form. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you get a gift called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is just not something that, that is given to us to say, oh, I got the Holy Spirit. No, he, we're given it to empower us. And with the gift of the Holy Spirit comes gifts. Now, everybody who is born has at least one gift from God. One gift, at least mm -hmm. one. Some of us have many, but you have at least one gift, one gift. So um, that's just in the simplest forms, the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, for the ones who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then what we're about to talk about is going to be foreign. Because first you have to uh, accept the ultimate gift, the ultimate sacrifice that was given, which is Jesus Christ. And then once you have accepted him, then you, you, um, then you will understand what the gifts that you have what what they are and what you are supposed to do with them. And let me put a pause right here. Let me put a pause because guess what? Remember I said, everybody's born with a gift. That includes unbelievers, right? So there's other people who have gifts, but they're not using it to glorify God. Okay. They're not using it to, they're just using it to use it, you know, but a lot of times they're not glorifying God. Let's real quickly go through this. Um, I do see we have some people on Facebook Live. If you guys want to stay on Facebook Live, that's fine. Just come on with your comments, your questions. Uh, we're about to go through the, we're, I'm just going to read through the gifts. Leadership. Leadership. Leadership aids the body by leading and directing members to accomplish the goals and purpose of the church. Leadership motivates people to work together in unity towards common goals. So did anybody, when you guys uh, completed your spiritual gifts assessment, was leadership one of your top three gifts? No? No. Okay. Uh, if anybody on Facebook, if leadership was one of your gifts, please let us know. Chime in, let us know. But um, look, and let me, let me put a pause real quick right here because a lot of us, even me, I even had the attitude of, I done did the spiritual gifts assessment. I already know what my gifts are. But guess what? I filled it out again today and it shifted. As we grow in Christ, your gifts it should be shifting as you grow, as you mature in Christ. So you might have started out here, but guess what? Maybe the season has changed, the purpose, your calling, your purpose, your anointing has changed. So maybe now it's shifted it more in this area in this area. So here's another administration, the gift of administration. Now I know my mother has this gift. My mom has the gift of administration. She's a Yes, I do. Yes, she is. 
The person with the gift of administrations lead the body by steering others to remain on task. Administration enables the body to organize according to God-given purposes and long-term goals. So has anybody scored in their top three gifts in administration? Yes. Okay, Mother, can you share with us, I know you're not on screen, uh, my mother, Mother Wallace, is, she's with us on Zoom. You can hear her talking, but you can't see her. Can you share with us how you use your gift in the body of Christ? Well, yeah, it's just as you said, it's, it's um, the gift of organization, um, being task-oriented and task-driven and helping people understand the task and what needs to be done and to follow it through. It's about um, uh, um, allowing people to help with the task and know what their responsibility is. And as the administ administrator, you sort of just lead them into um, their responsibility and let them go on and do their responsibility. But it's really task oriented and task driven. Okay. Thank you for, and now let me, just because, because surprisingly, you know, I'm a leader, but leadership isn't my strongest gifting, but I can say I do have leadership skills, administration, they're just not my strongest. So that might be for many of you guys too. It might not be your top three, but you still have the gift. Amen. So let's make sure. I see Facebook, Facebook audience be a little quiet. Okay, we can keep rolling. Um, teaching. Teaching is instructing members in the truths and doctrines of God's word for the purposes of building up, unifying, and maturing the body. So do we have any teachers? Anybody yes. score high in the gift of teaching? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. And so Elder Morrison and Mother Wallace scored. So Elder Morrison, can you tell us how you use your gift of teaching in the body of Christ? Uh, my gift is, as I find it, manifests in teaching the word of God and being able to make it plain enough that if you didn't know the Bible or the word of God, that I can make it plain enough that you would understand, um, get a comprehension of what is being said and what is being taught um, okay. as far as teaching. Yeah. Um, I find that that with, with, with me, um, I, I, just, I, I don't know. I just see it differently than mm -hmm. not differently, like I'm taking on a whole new gospel, but being able to explain the word of God with simplicity, but without losing what the word of God means. Amen. So mm -hmm. again, and I'm having everybody to share because some people might be unsure mm -hmm. of, okay, I think I got it, but I'm unsure. So we're just sharing with each other. Mm -hmm. We're just sharing with the touch. Guess what? It might be some teachers on out there in Facebook, you know, leaders, administrators. All right. So the next one we're going to move to and welcome Minister Felicia Day. We see you on Zoom. Welcome oh, to the line. Hello. hello. So the next one is the gift of knowledge. The gift of knowledge manifests itself in teaching and training and discipleship. It is the God-given ability to learn, know, and explain the precious truths of God's word. A word of knowledge is a spirit-revealed truth. So did anybody score high in knowledge or top three? One of your top three, knowledge? Yes, I did. Knowledge okay. was another one. Okay, Elder, can you explain how you use your gift in the body concerning uh, knowledge? The, the, the gift of knowledge, and I, and I see it, that they go hand in hand with teaching because mm -hmm. you can be teaching a truth and God will just give you a divine word or, or, or something divine in what you're teaching that it, I always call it the aha moment where the light bulb goes off. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that's listening to the teaching or whatever it is that you're doing, when that light bulb goes off, I call it, that's my definition, it's a word of knowledge where God just reveals, just drops something in you right in the midst of you teaching. It might not have been a part of your lesson plan, but God just dropped that word on you and you're able to explain and expound on what God has given you. Okay. All right. So 
Um, and again, Facebook, you're being quiet, I'm watching, but has anybody out there uh, experience what Elder just said, like you're in the middle of something, it's just like, boom, it just dropped in you real quickly, that knowledge. Again, you could talk back or join us on Zoom. This is a really good discussion for Zoom, uh -huh. but we're watch we are watching the comments on Facebook. All, All right, right, next, yes, we're going to uh, be I had one. I had, yes, uh, sir. The, Lord, the Lord woke me up at one this morning with, uh, uh, he wakes me up during the night and I write things down, but he woke me up uh, I received, it's time for us to um, stop failing God. Stop failing God? Stop failing God. We have been failing God for quite a while um, to where things could be a lot better. The more we uh, love on him and the more we trust in him, we receive more revelation, his will. Mm -hmm. um, the more time we spend with him. And he just spoke that into my spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just wrote it down. So, Thank you for sharing, because that's another example of knowledge, the right. gift of knowledge, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good to have talks like this, because we got to, we got to, we can learn from each other. Because see, the way Elder might receive it, it might be different, like Pastor Wallace, he got it in the, uh, woke up in the middle of the night. Right. Sometimes she gets it during teaching, okay? Mm -hmm. So the next gift is wisdom. Wisdom is the gift that discerns the work of the Holy Spirit in the body and applies his teachings and actions to the needs of the body. Um, and this was one of my top three. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. this, I, I um, <laughs> it changed within the year. I had, last year, I had a different top three, but right now, wisdom was one of them. Okay. The, uh, uh, and for me, um, it's kind of similar to the, the knowledge too, um, uh, but just uh, being able to, to share something and, and um, as it's revealed, um, but in a way that's biblical, mm -hmm. but yet it targets where it needs to go. So for me, sometimes, and let me explain this. If y'all ever watch like the um, 700 Club, you see a little bit of this in action. I see Pat and them do this all the time. They always give like a word of knowledge. Um, they'll quick, do, they'll say something like this. Somebody, and, so, and this is kind of borderline prophecy too. They kind of intermingle, but they'll say something like, um, somebody right now is having pain in their right knee. Go ahead and believe God for your healing right now. And it should be done according to your faith. Or something like somebody's been struggling with a decision. Right. You know, it, it just as you're praying or you're teaching, it'll just drop in you. And you don't know what it's about, but yet you got to give it right then. That's right. kind of what that, that word of wisdom, word of knowledge looks like. Uh, uh, so... And I've done that sometimes. It's, and it's, again, it's kind of that borderline prophetic too. Mm -hmm. Now let's pause right here before we go. Again, I know some of you guys are still completing your assessment. So you have time as we're talking and teaching to, um, to complete that. But let us, uh, actually, we're going to read the next couple. But the first couple we talked about, can somebody explain the importance of seeing and hearing concerning these gifts seeing and hearing in the spirit concerning these gifts well, it's important to us see and hear in the spirit because that's um that's the holy spirit giving you instructions from god and not only seeing and hearing but um but acting on one which you're seeing and hearing i think you you talked about that um a couple of weeks ago um, so it's important to to um, to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, so that um, you can communicate back and forth and get uh, direction uh, right. as as it relates to your life or somebody else's or both. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna read a couple more. I'm gonna read a few more, and another question will be after I read these few more. 
How dangerous would it be to be operating in these without seeing and hearing? Oh my gosh. So I'm going to read the next one, prophecy. The gift mm -hmm. of prophecy is proclaiming the word of God boldly. This builds up the body and leads to conviction of sin. Prophecy manifests itself in preaching and teaching. Um, that was one of my top three. Mm -hmm. Prophecy. Prophecy. Many of us uh, should at this point um, be prophesying. And the reason I say so, because the Bible says in the last days, um, no, he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons are going to dream dreams and, you know, your daughter's going to prophesy. Now I'm ad living, but y'all know the scripture that I'm talking about. Um, uh, many of us should be getting uh, uh, prophetic dreams. Uh, we should be speaking prophetic utterances at this time, not per se to say we're living in the, the per se, the last days, but we're approaching, right? Right. Um, however, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is here and he's strong. He's alive in our lives and mature believers should be uh, uh, able to uh, be, should be uttering pro prophetic utterances uh, and, and dreaming dreams. Anybody else? Have yes. Uh, yes. That's, that's one of my strong areas. And that's what I meant earlier when the Lord woke me up and he spoke to me Um it's time for us to stop telling God. That was a prophecy for the nations. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a prophecy to the church, but it's mostly to the nations. He's raising me up to speak to the nations as well as a prophet. Yeah. Um, um, during this time of uh, uh, the virus, a lot of good, a lot of things is happening, and it's time for us to recognize the days of God. And that's the message that, that God has put in my heart as a prophet uh, to speak to them, as a messenger to speak to the nations uh, so that they will understand uh, there's a God. Mm -hmm. God loves us all. And God is concerned for uh, the conditions that the world is facing. And, and to have this, this boldness uh, uh, to not to be afraid to what just says the Lord. And that's a strong area in, in my life is a uh to prophesy they call those things to be not as they were etc but to whatever the lord says for me to say to pertaining because he loves us all is to say it and i hurry up and write it down and that's what i was saying earlier it's time for us to stop telling him i wasn't particularly talking about the church mm -hmm. i was particularly talking about the world and the condition that it's in amen Amen. Yeah. And what you just said, Pastor Wallace, uh, in the statement, it says, this builds up the body and leads to conviction of sin. So right. by you giving that testimony, it lines up with what your gift is. Right. It's lining up. Anybody yeah. else? I have, that was one of my high gifts to prophecy. Okay. Um, with myself, I find uh, on the paper, it said that it manifests itself in preaching and in teaching. Mm -hmm. And with me, it does. But most of the time, my, if I start praying, mm -hmm. it manifests itself when I pray. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, th th that, that it does. Like I'll be praying and I'll be praying, you know, whatever I'm praying. And, you know, it's just all of a sudden I'll just know something and I'll mm -hmm. begin to pray that or I'll speak that. Or, or, you know, and so that's how minds, I would say my um, prophecy gift activates more is when I'm praying. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. seen it. I've seen mm -hmm. it with preaching. I've seen it with teaching, but I've also seen it a lot when I'm praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and because God has uniquely made us all different, right. all of us, we can, like two of us might have the same gift, but the way it comes out may not it's not may not look the same and it's okay right. yeah. you know for me i prophesy a lot to people who i'm in close relationship with right okay um that's how it come out of, of me sometimes when i'm preaching sometimes when i'm praying it just depends it just right. depends mm -hmm. um but um now let me start right here because the holy spirit just dropped this in my spirit um the bible warns about in the last days there arise a false prophets 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we've been talking about hearing and vision. Um, uh, uh, the last uh, week's lesson, we talked about the heart, the our heart, not our physical heart, but our heart that's connected to our beating, being can affect our vision and hearing. Right. So when our heart is hardened or we're stick-necked people or, or you know, is some sin going on and or we're resisting the Holy Spirit. Um, some people might have the gift, but because their heart is not lining up, false prophecy can take place mm-hmm. because it's going to contradict the word of God. But again, that's if you're not seeing and hearing in the spirit and in all of these gifts, again, people can be gifted Right. With gifts, but it's what you're doing with the gift. And at the end of the day, every single gift should glorify God. It doesn't matter what you have. Is it glorifying God? Are you is meaning is he able to get a return on his investment? So I just wanted to put that out there. Again, Facebook community still watching. Um we got a few more to go because I it's some more that's not on this sheet. I really want to to uh the next one is the gift of discernment and i believe that everybody uh, before you move on i had something to say about uh that what you were talking about uh, okay uh you're hearing and and you're seeing Mm -hmm. um because if you're not um if you don't have your spiritual ears on and eyes and uh, being able to see in the spirit when you Mm -hmm. talk about we need to have that because when you talk about false prophets we need to hear, have our spiritual eyes and ears activated so that we will know and be able to discern who is uh, the false prophets or the, or the false teachers or the, the ones that, that's spewing out uh, not wisdom. They may sound like it's wisdom, but it's not. But you will only know that with your spiritual eyes and ears. Amen. That's a good point, Amen. Mother Wallace, because... Uh, the Bible did say how a lot of people are going to be led astray mm-hmm. by the false prophets. Oh, yes. And why are they led astray? Because again, their relationship, they're looking up to maybe a man or a woman instead of God as they serve. We all need to have that relationship with God for ourselves. We need right. to read the word for ourselves. We need to, again, all of us, all of us, who are believers in Christ, who has accepted him as our Lord and Savior, has been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is on us to activate what has been given. Amen. Amen. So um, discernment. Discernment aids the body by recognizing the true intentions of those within or related to the body. Discernment tests the message and actions of others for the protection and well-being of the body. So that's pretty clear and straightforward. Uh, we should be, we, if, if ever was a time to be discerning, we need to be discerning right now. Again, with all these messages going on, with all of these things, I believe all believers should have a gift of discernment. It might not be your strongest gift, right. but um, the Holy Spirit will give you discernment. He will give you discernment. Now I'm going to go a little bit quickly because we got quite a few more gifts to get through. And I know some other people probably finish up their assessments and we'll be hearing. Um, exhortation. Discernment. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, babe. Discernment was, was one of my spiritual gifts. Can you tell us how you use that body that in the body of Christ? Um, discernment <clears throat> discernment is, is uh, I like to say, our spiritual eyes. Um, that's another sense. Um, that I would like to call, um, you know, we have our, our five, um, our, 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 you know, we our flesh, fleshly senses, but, you know, I, I think discernment is another sense that, um, that the Holy Spirit has given, given us. Um, so I, I use it, I use it um, in the body of Christ just to um, discern people, um, their, who they, who they are, because some people can, um, they can say that or they can show that they're they're one person and but you know if you don't have the spirit of discernment um you may you may believe who they're 
who they're per, may be portraying, but they they may not really be that that person. Or even when you're doing business, you, it's always good to have a uh, um, a sense of discernment uh, so that you know uh, who to do business with and who not. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that is true. And just and I'm not just bragging because he's my husband, but I do praise uh, God for Ryan because uh, part of the ministry, um, he does have that strong gift of discernment. And I can go to him with things and, and bounce ideas or things that I'm feeling and or he'll come to me and it's it's right on point. And, and even on this week, he has said something prophetic, but he and he had discerned it in the spirit and it manifest it turned out to be true. Okay. It turned out and 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 to me it, it just was very um uh it, it's, it's such a blessing to have people that's surrounding you as a leader that have discernment. Right. right. Amen. Amen. It's very important. And we got Miss uh, Kim right. joining us on the line. Hello, Miss Kim. Okay, we can still wait for you to connect. I did get on Facebook that you scored high in discernment. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to comment. I would like to make a comment on that. I think my wife has some I think my wife uh, has a, a lot of discernment. Because <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I might be looking at some things from blinders, you know what I'm saying? And she'll bring out a good point. And I can say, oh, yeah, you know, that's right. Uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's wisdom. I appreciate that. So a lot of times she, she can really bring out some good points on where I may sometime uh, miss it or not intentionally, but she can bring out some good things. That's part of discernment as well. Mm hmm Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, discernment is key, especially if you especially if you are in ministry, um, you got to have discernment. You have to um, you just have to have that discernment. You have to have uh, this is important. But then in your everyday believer's life, you have to have discernment yes. because some and look and and. Some of us, and I've been guilty of this, I be discerning things, but then I'll get in denial about it. Like, like I, I, I feel it, but yet I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm denying it, you know, yeah, but that could co be costly down the road. It could be costly down the road. Can I, can I, give, a, can I give a quick testimony yes. of discernment? Uh, I'm from Detroit and I was driving down, going down the city, uh, street called Six Mile. And uh, I normally turn um, on a particular street. And it came in and said, spoke to me, the spirit spoke to me and said, go one block over and turn that way and turn one block over. So I, I did what the spirit said. So I turned to run the, the next block over and there was a, lack, a naked prostitute. And um, nobody would help her. But then make a long story short, I helped her and um, invited her to church for that never happened, but anyway, the spirit of discernment told me to help this woman. I wouldn't if I would have went to the to the right at that first like I normally would go. I wouldn't have heard him, and he had me to assist her by going the next block. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you say she was naked? She was naked. <laughs> she, had been, she had been raped. <laughs> she, I mean, she's a prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have some discernment and wisdom on how to approach that. Because I wasn't afraid. I wasn't yeah. afraid of it. Everybody else was afraid of it. I was not. Yes. Yes. All right. Kim, are you on with us? I am. Um, yeah, I scored very high on discernment. The thing for me is because I'm a new, you know, born again <laughs> Christian within the last couple years, mm -hmm. I've always had it but I didn't know what to do with it. I was very mm -hmm. um, uh, afraid, but now I'm embracing it. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, what, what, you know, what can I do to embrace it more? Um, what can you do to embrace it more? Obey God, mm -hmm. just obey the next thing he tells you to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the simplest form uh, that's just without anybody else. What what can our sister do to embrace her gift of discernment more? 
I, I agree with you and obeying what, what you're hearing, what the spirit is saying to you and impressing upon you. You go with what, what God or the, what the spirit is telling you. Um, and the more you keep doing that, um, you're exercising that gift. You're scratching that gift out. See, gifts don't work if we don't use them. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you got to use them. Don't be afraid to use them. And guess what? If you miss it, okay, you just repent and move on. Don't let guilt consume you like, oh, you got that wrong. Now you call yourself for this because that's how the enemy will do you. You know, you say you this, mm, you know what? It's okay. Uh, that was on the cross too. <laughs> and just, you know what I'm saying? Just keep going. Keep doing what you feel that the Lord is saying to you in your spirit. And of course, you're praying and you're communicating with God at the same time. He's not going to lead you wrong, baby. He's not going to lead you wrong. My mother used to always say, this is how you test it. Will the devil tell you to do that? Mm. <laughs> Does he want somebody to be happy? Does he want somebody to be set free? Hmm. Yeah. But go yeah. with God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then you had said something about fear. Um, and a lot of times, too, if you feel fear creeping up, because sometimes it's not that we don't want to obey it's the fear of maybe the unknown if i do this how would it be received will i be rejected what's the consequences so sometimes if if we're dealing with the fear we know that's what we got to stay in prayer lord help me with this help right. me with uh fear because fear is holding me back from um you know not just obeying but Again, I, I'm discerning, but the gift was given for a response. So mm. you have it, but what's your response for using it? So does that help, uh, Kim? Oh my gosh, it does. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, we're, we're moving along. Now I'm gonna move through a couple. See, I got a couple more. So give me about a few minutes. Let me read through a few of these and we'll get back to it just for time's sake. It's getting a little late and I do have a couple more gifts that's not on this sheet, but I believe it's important to, to go through. Uh, exhortation. Exhortation. Possessors of this gift encourage members to be involved in and enthusiastic about the work of the Lord. Members of this gift are good counselors and are motivated to uh, motivate others to serve. Exhortation exhibits itself in preaching, teaching, and ministry. So exhortation. And then I'm going to read a few more of these, and then I'm going to give everybody time to comment because these might be one of your strong gifts. Shepherding. Shepherding is the gift of shepherding is manifested in persons who look out for the spiritual welfare of others. Although pastors like shepherds do care for the members of the church, this gift is not limited to a pastor or staff member. Amen. Somebody say J Jethro. That's a little inside joke. So shepherding, <laughs> shepherding, um, faith, <laughs> faith. Faith trusts God to work beyond the human capabilities of the people. Believers with this gift encourage others to trust God in the face of apparently unsurmountable odds. Okay, so the gift of faith. That was Next, another one of my name. That's another one of your eyes. Okay, faith. So uh, Deacon Ron, I'm going to have you share in a, just a minute. Let me read through a few more. Um, evangelism. God gives his church with evangelists to lead others to Christ effectively and enthusiastically. This gift builds up the body by adding new members to its fellowship. Mm -hmm. Apostleship. The church sends apostles from the body to plant churches or be missionaries. Apostles motivate the body to look beyond its walls in order to carry out the Great Commission. And I know our sister Valerie will probably fit into this category because right. she's very compelled and drawn to go outside uh, of the, the country. Service and helps. Those with the gift of service helps recognize practical needs in the body and joyfully give assistance to meeting those needs. Christians That's with fine. this gift do not mind working behind the scenes. So we know Mother Wallace has that gift of service and help. 
Let me read the rest of them and then we're gonna open it up to discussion. And also Facebook, if you guys have some of these gifts, you can type that in the comments as well. Mercy, cheerfully acts of compassion characterize those with the gifts of mercy. Persons with this gift aid the body with empathizing with hurting members. They keep the body healthy and unified by keeping others aware of the needs within the church. Giving. Members with the gift of giving give freely and joyfully to the work and mission of the body. Cheerfulness and liberty are characteristics of individuals with this gift. Hospitality. Those with this gift had the ability to make visitors, guests, and strangers feel at ease. They often use their home to entertain guests. Persons with this gift integrate new members into the body. And that was one of my top three, hospitality. So now let's open it up. I'd have read those three. Deacon Wise, uh, you said you had the gift of faith. If you would like to share how you use that gift in the body, Mother Wallace, you're next with uh, your gift uh, of service and helps. And uh, Minister Felicia, we haven't heard from you, so I know you have to chime in. So Deacon Wise. Um, yeah, my uh, my uh, gift of faith is, uh, you know, I use it in the body because, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, we may be going through some things in life and uh, it's it's unexplainable. Uh, for anybody uh, to, you know, to explain or, or have the answer to. But when you have faith, you know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So, you know, I know we all, we all know that scripture and it is, it's sometimes hard to, to live by it. But, you know, when you just trust God and, uh, you know, activate your faith, then, um, you know, uh, for me, at least, you know, things, it, it, it's, it makes more sense. Because I just I tell people all the time, just look look at God's track record. Right. You know, God has never failed failed me. Um, you know, when I've been in situations I didn't know how to get myself out of, He was always been there. And uh, I know it's it, it's nothing that I've you know spectacular that I've done. It's just His grace and mercy. How much He loves us all so much that He uh, He sheds His grace and mercy on us all. But when you have faith, it's just that that much easier. Uh, to go through uh, certain situations because you know God is never going to leave you and or forsake you. So that's how I use my faith and and uh, and it, that seems to work out good for me. Amen. Amen. Definitely. In the, in the body of Christ. Who is next, Mother Wallace? You. She said you, okay. I didn't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you, you said you had a gift of, of service and help. Oh uh, yeah, giving service and help. You know, it's just uh, being able to recognize um, a need and, and joyfully being able to fulfill feel that need without looking for anything in return or, or whatever. So uh, just being able to be of service, uh, whatever, looking for things in the, body that you can help out with, people that you can help with. Uh, so yeah, I rank high in, the, in giving service and help. Uh, all of those hospitality, all of those are pretty much the same. Just being able to look for a need and being able to fill that need. Awesome. And then again, as I hear everybody talk, just this <clears throat> looks like a healthy church. Uh, when everybody is is functioning in their gifts, uh, that's a very healthy, Amen. prosperous church. When and look, when people are allowed, okay, to function in their gifts, because sometimes Amen. people are struggling in ministries because they're sitting there with all these gifts, but they're not being used. Right, they're not being used, and and you know, um, <clears throat> but a healthy church. Is making sure they're they're uh, using all the gifts that's present. Now, Minister Felicia, are you? Do you have uh, one of those gifts that you would like to share on? You're on mute. 
wait a minute. Okay. You want us to wait a minute? Minister Felicia? Okay. While we're waiting uh, for Minister Felicia, I want to go uh, with a couple other uh, gifts. A couple other um, gifts that we didn't get to that Lifeway didn't have, but I feel is very important. Um, craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Hold on, let me move this over. The gift of craftsmanship, and it's on the screen. I also have it on the Facebook page and um, the Zoom. So I'm going to read that. The gift of craftsmanship is the divine strength or ability to plan, build, and work with your hands in construction environments to accomplish multiple ministry applications. Mm. Now, we don't, we haven't really heard about this gift, but this is an important gift in the body of Christ. Because mm. guess what? There's people in the body that they might not be the people that's up front preaching and teaching and doing all this, but they can work with their hands. That's right. And that's a gift. That's a gift. So craftsmanship, the uh, divine ability mm -hmm. to, to plan, build, and work with your hands in construction environments to accomplish multiple ministry applications. So somebody here might have the gift of craftsmanship. Okay. Another gift that we did wasn't on the other one was the gift of healing and it says on here the gift of healing is the divine strength or ability to act as an intermediary in faith prayer and by laying on of hands for the healing of physical mental and spiritual sicknesses um some of us uh, have might have that gift if you guys have a craftsmanship for healing, let me know. E even um, even uh, uh, the ones on Facebook, the gift of healing. Um, I do know as the spirit leads me, I have laid hands on people and prayed with them and prayed um, uh, for a physical healing, but not only that, um, driving out demon demons. I have uh, driven out demons before. Um, so some people do have that gift. Uh, Kim says she's taking a test at work in church and scored high on craftsmanship. So, mm -hmm. All right, Kim. So you are a builder. You know how to work them hands. That's a blessing. Again, and as leaders, especially like me as a, a, a pastor, it's important for us to be able to plug the people in. Right. We got to be able to plug them. And if we don't know how to plug them, we have to pray to God to show us, God, what do you have for them to do? You know, so again, um, the gift of healing. Uh, does anybody have the gift of healing? Yes, I, I believe I do. Okay. Um, can you share? Uh, it's and My wife can attest to this or, or those who be around me can attest to this. It's not... Uh, I have discernment when to pray and when not to pray, but I don't hesitate to pray for people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where I am. I can be in Walmart, so I can be, but I do it with wisdom, but I get permission. I understand uh, through conversation. Uh, and I'll ask them, do they, would you like prayer? Would you like to have prayer? And they will let me, yes, I would love to have prayer. Would you, um, would you pray for me? But basically it starts with, with me. It starts with a general conversation. And mm -hmm. I, I like to talk. But I, I talk the things of Christ, the things of God. But when that door opens up, I'm going to ask, can I pray for you? And I will lay, um, if it calls for man hands, I will lay hands. If it calls just for praying, but listening to what I can pray about. And uh, because of the conversation uh, right. has, has taken place, they allow me to pray for them. And I, I just love it. Right. And let me uh, do a quick little teaching here. Um they, I have seen some people operate. I've seen a famous preacher, Ron and I've seen a famous pre preacher who has this gift of healing. You know, just there's some people have a special gift of healing. Right. But for a lot of us, um, healing comes through again as the spirit is leading us at that moment. Because yes. um, every time I've done it, it hasn't been uh, like 
I don't see myself as being like that one preacher that I've seen. It's just flowing in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Also to another thing that just dropped in my spirit, the Holy Spirit reminded me of somebody I'm connected to. Um, that's in, in uh, the other ministry that I do. And they enjoy doing cards, greeting cards. That's, they, they like to create them and make them. That's a form of craftsmanship. Because we can't get in the mind of, oh, a building like hammer and nails. Right. You know, they like to uh, uh, design them, make them, and give them to bless people. Right. Okay. So that's, an, that's an example of craftsmanship. Right. Another one, and Pastor Wallace, you had touched on, um, it, uh, the gift of intercession. The gift of intercession is the divine strength or ability to stand in the gap in prayer for someone, something or some place, believing for profound results. Um, I do know that's one of my giftings. Um, another teaching, though, uh, there's a there's a such a thing called having the mantle of a intercessor or a mantle of a prophet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I do know that this is one of my uh, very strong gifts, uh, and it has been for year. Uh, mantle and and when you have the mantle of it you know the lord will keep he'll wake you up at three four five in the morning you trying to mm. sleep and mm. he will not let you rest mm. until you get up you pray you intercede there's been times that i have been in trances and i'm praying in the spirit so i'm somewhere between earth and heaven praying in the spirit that's kind of what a mantle looks like it's the burden has been placed on you um, and look, not always by your choosing, mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. not by your choosing, yep. but you still carry the mantle to intercede. And for, right. but for some of us here on the line, you had the, that, uh, gift of intercession, uh, would anybody would like to share or on Facebook. I see Chrissy is watching. Mm -hmm. Hey, sister Chrissy, how you doing? Um, does, uh, what does any, for the ones that I've just read, cause I got a few more. Does anybody want to share uh, uh, some of these gifts that I've read? Right. I, 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 I'm an intercessor. I, I operate under the gift of intercession. Mm -hmm. And for years, I did not understand that gift. Um, and how God has operated with me in that is, is, is what it says. You stand in the gap. Um, I can, a couple of times, you know, sometimes, you know, like you'll be sleeping and you'll just wake straight up. Like you sit right up in the bed, wide awake. And sometimes um, he has given me a name. He's given me a first name. Sometimes he's given me a first and a last name. Sometimes I have seen people, you know, and God will just drop in my spirit of what I'm supposed to pray for. And then I'll just go ahead and stand in the gap for that, that, that person. Some of these people I don't even know. Um, I, I think twice I actually knew a person that it happened to, mm -hmm. um, that, that he was getting me to pray for, that I actually knew them. But others, I don't have no idea who these people are. You know, he'll show me a person, he'll show me what they're doing, or he'll just give me a name. And you're right, it's something that he puts on you and you cannot turn over and go, okay, I'll do it later. It's one of those get up, it's like a, a parent, get your butt up now. Mm -hmm. It's you got to get up then. It's just something that's on you. That's all I can explain it to you as. And you, it, it doesn't move until you actually go ahead and pray and stand in the gap. Yes. So yes. I know about that one. Thank yes. You. Yes. The mantle of intercession. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll probably do some more teaching later in this ministry concerning prayer and everything because that's a whole nother teaching in itself. Um, here's another gift I'm going to read. It's two more gifts that I'm going to read. And, uh, you know, then that'll be it. Uh, this wasn't on the other one either. The gift of miracles. The gift of miracles is the divine strength or ability to alter the natural outcomes of life mm. in a supernatural way through prayer, faith, and divine direction. The gift of miracles. Um, so you might have that gift. You might be able. Look, I believe every uh, believer should have experienced the miracle in their 
their journey with Christ. You right. should have witnessed mm-hmm. or seen a miracle. Uh, miracles really are a, really a part of our everyday lives for the believers, for the believers, miracles. Uh, but if you have the gift of a miracle, um, again, you know, you, you, you're, you're truly operating. Well, all of it's supernatural, but to alter natural outcomes. Um, yeah. And again, for me, uh, again, a lot of, a lot of these gifts kind of flow. You might not necessarily have the, the, the mantle might not be your strongest, but you might have been the vessel to where a miracle took place, right? you know, at that time. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, and then lastly, um, tongues. tongues. Um, it was interesting how the other uh, one survey lift, uh, left out the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, but we know that that is a gift of the spirit. And we don't, and that's why I really want to get to this sheet because, uh, like some of you guys, it took me, I had the gift of tongues for years. I haven't started audibly, audib- it hasn't become audible probably just within the last three years, but I've had it. It was in my spirit, but it didn't become audible until maybe these last two to three years because uh, I didn't understand it and it wasn't, I didn't see it come forth uh, in the, my background or, or the assembly that I was attending. Mm-hmm. Um, it just wasn't a part of the culture. Uh, right. But however, yeah. yet I was sitting in this assembly with this gift, but just was unsure of it. So tongues, the gift of tongues. And let me pause right here. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so man. I used to feel bad, like, oh, I don't fit, speak in tongues. I ain't spiritual enough. No, it's a gift. It's a gift because some people can speak and some can interpret and others prophesy, right? right. So don't feel bad if you don't speak in tongues, okay? Yes. Don't the, yes. look, your salvation yeah. is in your belief in Christ Jesus, right? Okay? Be- I'm going to leave that alone. Let me read this. The gift of tongues is the divine strength or ability to pray in a heaven to encourage your spirit and commune with God. The gift of tongues is often accompanied by interpretation and should be used appropriately. So Mm -hmm. let me pause right here. I, there's a difference between praying in tongues. And speaking right. in tongues in the public setting, um, I believe, and this is just me, uh, if you have a microphone and you're speaking in tongues and not praying in tongues, there should be an interpreter. Why? Right. Because everybody in the room might not understand what you're saying or have the interpretation of tongues. Because again, mm-hmm. that's a gift. Um, right. uh, but that's me though. That's me. And I have been at a few services not many where there was an interpreter present and wow what a difference what a difference it is mm-hmm. because the interpret the interpreter was confirming what was being spoken mm-hmm. and it was just and to see it flowing like that it's like oh, oh i can't sorry. describe it but it, it was like uh can you tell i gotta use the restroom it was it was it was it was awesome so Tongues, and you might have, you might speak in tongues, and you might have the gift of interpreting tongues. Now, I just want to pause right here because we're about to wrap it up shortly. Of all the gifts that we have went over, if you still have questions or are um, are, are are not or are concerned or want more information about your specific gift, please uh, inbox me or text me. You can inbox or write here or leave in the comments on Facebook and I can be sure to get you more information. Mm-hmm. However, if you notice all of these worksheets have scriptures attached mm-hmm. to the gifts. So I want you to start there first. If you have questions about your gift or you don't understand, I want you to read those scriptures that's attached to the gift. 
because what more to get the best understanding than the word of God? <laughs> and then if you're like, that was good, but I want to go deeper. I just want to know more. Come holler at me and I'll get, I have a, a, a slew of resources to give you. Um, so do we have, of all the gifts that I just went over, uh, I did talk about tongues. I talked about uh, miracles. I talked about intercession and all the other gifts that was listed. Would anybody else like to share that's here on Zoom or Facebook on how they use their gift in the body of Christ? Um, I, you can hear me now. I, yes. I couldn't unmute myself. That's what it was. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, and I couldn't unmute myself until you unmuted me, but... Um, Going through these, I, I found that um, I was mostly in leadership, um, teaching, um, and I, I don't like to get into uh, always the prophecy because I, I tend to see that people do a lot more prophet line than prophesying. So mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of, but I do know that when someone is speaking with wisdom on something that God is showing them that's gonna happen, that is a spiritual prophecy right there. And most spiritual prophecies are stuff people don't wanna hear. Mm -hmm. Because we have to recognize that the prophets, when when they saw them coming, it was, a, it was hey, 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 we not happy right now because they not gonna bring us no good news. Right. But I've been in that situation where I don't want to profess myself as a prophet, but I was able to hear the wisdom of God tell me, look, this is what is about to happen to them, which leads to the, the I guess, the prophetic, the prophetic idea of what's happening when a person is getting ready to walk into something that they just, they're not hearing from anyone else. And I believe that, you know, God has used me in many times to do that. Mm -hmm. Um those are things that I felt comfortable with. And I knew that those were things that are, are my strong points, the exhortation as well. And all of those things that I, I was able to identify for myself, they actually were all tied into Romans, um, the Romans chapter 12 through um, six through eight. So when I when when you when I read that as a, a collective, it identified exactly um, all those qualities and all those points that are really some of my strong suits. And you know, I mean, you just have to thank God for the gifts that He gives you, and 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 try to use them to the best of your ability without you know identifying that it's yours because these are gifts that have been given. And, you know, I would never want even, you know, that's why I'm very careful about the prophetic thing, because I know that, look, I'm not that, that put together to be able to say I could see into this. So anything that comes from my lips that has a prophetic notion, I can admit and testify right now that it's only through God. It's not something that I can sit back and say, okay, I, I can see this happening to you. Um, but I do um, respect and, and, and enjoy reading the, the, the excerpts that, that were there and listening to everybody else talk about how, what they were able to have. Because like I said, all these beautiful gifts come from God. And it's just good to hear everybody else talk about, you know, things that they know that, that they came directly from God, you know, so that was, that was really good. But those were the things that were my strong points. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And, and one thing you mentioned, uh, Minister Felicia, uh, with the prophetic gift, because we were living in a time where, again, what I see a lot in the body of Christ is people that are gifted, but they're undisciplined. Mm -hmm. You can have a gift, Oh, yeah. But yet you don't have discipline. And no. that is important. And how do we get discipline? Through the word of God. Right. The word of God, first of all, the gifts were given to shine the light on Christ. But a lot of people like to do it backwards. So if this is Christ and this is the gifts, the gifts are shining the light on Christ. Right? Right. 
But if you don't know Christ, how mm. can you shine the gift on him? Right. So again, you can have, so then it's a, it's, it's supposed to be like this, this is Christ and we're shining, but then it becomes like a seesaw. I got the gift, but Christ is down here. But Christ, so then with the unbalance comes the undisciplined. Like this, like I, my fist represents the rock. That's discipline and the gift. And the gift, all the gifts, whatever your gift is, is given to shine the light on Christ. That's um, right. um, and, and, mm -hmm. and always remember this, your gift should produce fruit. So let's mm -hmm. use the even the gift of prophecy. Uh, God said, you know, it came from me if it comes to pass. Right. That's called fruit. Speaking in tongues, you know, praying in tongues. What, what What's the fruit of that? You know, um, uh, uh, administration, whatever the gift is, uh, mm -hmm. it is like Minister Felicia said, God gave it. Right. To shine back on him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody Amen. else? I agree. Okay. I, agree. I, wrote, would... something. Uh -huh. I wrote something down okay. and um, a couple of things down. And uh, I wrote that uh, as we seek to identify and utilize the gift of God, uh, which he has given us, our main thing should be love uh, towards God and towards in Christ and towards others. We can have all the gifts, but that's our, just be our main motivation and um, the gifts is in, 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 in Corinthians. It's a it's of the self same spirit. So as we study the word of God, as we have leaders that are rightly dividing the word of truth, work was not being ashamed. We studied like like the Bible studies. We study. We're getting. We're, we're understanding the gifts and what the word of God says because in in in, in Corinthians uh real quick. In chapter 12, it talks about it's of the self-same spirit. And if somebody can read 11, 11, it tells us uh, it, it's uh, chapter 11, I mean, 12, 11 says, but but all these worketh that, I ain't got my glasses, the one self-same spirit divided to every man. Can somebody read that? I don't have my glasses. Um, okay. Hold on. 12, 11. It's of the, it, it, Paul talks about, he explains it all because there was misunderstanding and he was setting it straight. If we read the scriptures and study, he was straightening, he was straightening, he straightened things out. But it's, he says it's of the self same spirit, and 11 tells us a lot there. Yeah, it says, but one and the same spirit work all things, distributing to each one individually as he will. So yeah, they're coming from the same Holy Spirit. Yes. Pastor Wallace. You're right. Yep. Right. Anyone when, else would yeah. like to share? I, I would real quick. When you were talking about the gift of tongues in the church that uh, that you came from, um, the ministry, they didn't um, they didn't operate in it. I'll just use those words. And I too came in the ministry. And I still remember the day that God birthed me in tongues and praying because I was, we would, on, on the evangelism team, we always went out in twos. So if my partner went to pray, I went with my partner to cover my partner. And I can remember standing there and, you know, just praying, you know, for her as she's praying. And all of a sudden I just started speaking in this tongues and me, you know, and I'm going to say it being ignorant. I said, what? Who? You know, and I stopped it. I quenched it, right? And I and I stopped and then I, you know, I started, I was quiet. Then I started again and it just kept flowing. And so, but I, I come to realize now, um, later on, those are some years ago, because 
I, we weren't taught on tongues. You know, it was taught that if you speak in tongue, somebody has to prophesy. You know, somebody have to, to interpret that tongue or you have to interpret your tongue when you speak it. But I did not know that there was a gift of tongues, right? In prayer, that when you pray, that you speak in tongues. You're speaking to your heavenly father when you're speaking in tongues. And it wasn't taught that they're, 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 it's a gift of tongues. It comes from God, but it's what... What does he birth you to do? Mine's is in prayer. When I pray, I'll just go into tongues. Um, somebody else, they have the gift of, of, of interpreting. And I've seen that in a service too, that when someone gets up and speak in tongues, someone comes behind and interprets what they say. And when it happens, it's a beautiful thing. You know, it's God. You, you know, it's God because most of the times that I've seen it, the person who gets up and begins to speak in tongues and the perfect person that interprets it are two different people. They don't even know each other. That's mm -hmm. how you know you've flown in the Holy Ghost. And right. I just wanted to add that there that, you know, that's why we, and you're right. As um, uh, Pastor Wallace said, we have to get an understanding of the giftings that's in the body of Christ. That each that like me, uh, that I might have the same gift as you, but you operate different in your gift than I operate in my gift. That's why you can go to the store and you can get the same color shoe, but different sizes and different variation of the same shoe, but it's a red shoe. So, you know, this, things like this is important that we learn the gifting in the body of Christ and what they're used for and how no two gifts looks alike. Amen. Amen. Man, that's, and good. Saying that, that's a good point. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Deacon Wise. Yeah, that no, I, I was just I was just saying that, that she made she made a very good point there. Um, you know, because a lot of people um, you know, they they don't they don't realize that. So uh that's that's a that's a very, very good valid point that she just made there, Elder Elder Morris. Yeah, God be your glory, yeah. And just to piggyback on that too, all of you know, all of us in the body, we just have to stay in our lane. Man. Because I see a lot of people, we can't covet the gifts. Right. What God gave you is for you, and what God gave me is for me. But and it should be no competition. Right. You know, it should be no, you know, everybody just needs to flow and what God has given them. You know, and and this let me and and guess what? Ain't no gift insignificant than another. Yes. No, and your gifts will make room for oh, you. Yes, they will. <laughs> yes, and yes. when you are passionate about what you're doing, uh, that that in turn becomes your gift because you have a passion for that. It's something yes. that you do yes, automatically. You don't have to think about it. It's part. Of, you know, when I help someone, I don't have to stop to think. I'm gonna help this person. It's just part of who you are. Right. That's good. It's it's a <laughs> part of who you are. So you can't be hospitable to someone if if that's not in you, because they can see through Man. that. You know, uh, uh, you cannot lead people, and if that's not in you, a good leader has most of these gifts, and even though you don't score high on them, a good leader has just about all of these gifts as, in in. In, in some way or another, you're going to score higher on some of them, but when your your gift will make room for you and you will do it automatically, that's when it pleases God, not when you're doing it just to please man. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. Preach it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and one last, you know, that reminds me of one last thing. We're going to be uh, closing out. Thank you guys for hanging with us a little uh, longer today. Um, some of, um, let me just get back to one thing too, for me with the, uh, the tongues, um, for me, you know, that's why we got to always make sure we stay in our lane and not worry about what everybody else do and want to do. Um, because, uh, for me now, a lot of times when I'm in tongues, I'm like, like elder, I'm in prayer or worship, but my tongues are more connected to warfare. And a lot of times, if the tongues is coming out for me, it's some serious battle going on. And, and, and it's kind of like, that's the tool now right. that God has given me to use this. 
But you know, that's that's how he's giving it to me. Yeah. To me. Yeah. But guess what? You can't say, oh well, I wanna, I wanna speak in tongues like her. I wanna pray like her. I wanna preach like her. But if you know what's behind some of the, the the gifts or or some of the things, even let's say somebody might have the gift of healing, the gift of miracles. But it, I guarantee if you check the backstory of their personal life, mm -hmm. you'll probably be like, oh, wait a minute. I might not want that. You know, right. somebody might have literally died and came back with the gift or somebody, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, somebody uh, had to experience healing for themselves right. and then it was given, you know. So, again, we have to make sure and, and again, and I'm just saying this just because I see it a lot in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure that we are operating in the gift that God has given us. We need to obey the next thing God has for us to do. And we got to have an open heart mm -hmm. to what God is trying to do through us. Amen. Because again, you might have a gift, but you might be sitting on it or not moving in it because of fear or what people going to think, or you're trying to figure it out. So that's just what I want to leave with. Um, anything, any final comments or uh, I see you Kim on a, a Facebook. I see you. See you, Kim. So any other final thoughts before we wrap up? Yes, comments? I have a final thought on okay. what you said earlier. You said that uh, um, intercession, intercession is connected with praying in the spirit as well. Because you said that you go into like warfare when you go into praying in tongues and you can be praying, you can be interceding for someone else in that warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's sort of connected. You may not know the person. You may not know the person. That person can be in Timbuktu, but you have this, this, this spirit of Christ has come upon you uh, and you begin to intercede for that person in, in the spirit. And it gets, it gets no telling them what, what the results may come from it, but intercession in terms of uh, intertwined as well. Okay. Amen. You're right. That's you are true. absolutely right. A lot of these gifts are intertwined. A lot of yes. them. The word of knowledge, yes. prophecy, mm -hmm. wisdom. A lot of them are, are discernment. They're in they're intertwined. Right. They're intertwined. I just tell people flow in the spirit. Right. Yes. Don't don't try to figure it out. Just flow with the spirit. Right. That's all I because some people be like, Well, how you be doing that? How you do that? No, just I and I'll be like, I just be flowing with the spirit. Right. I don't look half the time. I don't know what I'd be saying sometime. It just be the spirit moving through. Me. Right. That's, that's all it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. So again, the purpose of this uh, discussion and, and, and interaction, I pray all of you guys have enjoyed it and learned uh, more about uh, uh, the gift and who you are in Christ. Um, but to tie it back to everything we've been doing in the month, again, the importance of hearing with your ear and seeing with your eye uh, uh, is key to operating at your fullest in the gift. You know, you have to be mm -hmm. able to see in the spirit and hear in the spirit to flow in the spirit. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's just what I'm leaving. Just a few announcements and we're going to be leaving off because we have went over about 18 minutes of our time. So thank you for uh, sharing with us. Normally we wrap it up. Uh, everything's done by eight. But hey, when the spirit is flowing and teachings going forth, we just got to go with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Next week, Elder Deborah Morrison is going to be kicking off our month series of first responders of faith. So that's going to start. Right. Down yeah, the Mars. Yeah, she's she's Amen. gonna kick it off, Amen. and, and y'all know. Pray for Amen. me. Pray for me. She gonna come oh, on with it. Yeah, so she, that's gonna be good. Good. yeah, so she's she's gonna be kicking it off next Thursday at seven o'clock again, right back here on Zoom and Facebook Live. Um, also that Friday night, August the seventh, Minister Felicia Day, who is here on the line, she's gonna be bringing a word. Yeah. on Friday at seven o'clock on our, not this page, but our business page, Wise Choice Ministries. Um, also that will be communion 
uh, Friday. Uh, Minister Felicia will be leading us in communion online. So get your crackers and juice ready. Spread the word, especially to those who are homebound, have not able to come to church. A lot of people just miss having communion. Well, we're doing mm -hmm. it online next Friday, promptly at seven o'clock. Minister Felicia, I heard that you ready. Are you ready, girl? <laughs> Be always ready. <laughs> <laughs> she she's uh, ready for that word um, mm -hmm. next month. I'm just I'm just grateful and blessed uh, that this ministry is growing and and we have a team of of fire filled Holy Ghost people that's um, willing and able to bring that word. Um, also on next month, Elder Morrison will be preaching on the third Friday of the month, and I'm just I'm just excited to hear these ladies because I know. Uh, uh, I've heard them preach before and I know I'm, you guys are in for a treat. Um, lastly, if you haven't followed us on Instagram and YouTube, we are on Instagram and YouTube. These Bible studies and worship service and even our Instagram posts are on our YouTube page. So there's a lot of people who's not on Facebook, but they can always connect to us through other ways and the website. Um, and then if you've been enjoying this Bible study, this fellowship, you can invite other people to join this page. If you have friends on Facebook and you think that they will enjoy this Bible study, invite them to join the page. All you got to do is go on the page, push invite, and all your friends will come up. So I uh, just spread the word. Uh, continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Thank you, Deacon Ron Wise, my husband, whoop, whoop, who led Amen. us in Amen. prayer Amen. this morning. Amen. And Amen. it is something when the men pray. Amen. Can I get a witness? You know, us women, we Amen. pray. Amen. And we, we can pray. But see, when Amen. the men Hallelujah. pray, oh, Lord, it's a, it's a whole different level. So yes. thank you, Deacon Ron Wise, for leading us in prayer this morning. You will be hearing more from Deacon Wise soon. He be shy, but he come on with it, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> he comes on with it. So um, be sure to leave your prayer requests. We are on here every Thursday morning. I can't give you quite a time because our schedules are all different. But you'll hear from us on Thursday mornings, praying and interceding for you. Leave your prayer requests on the page uh, and we will pray for you. And you don't have to wait till Thursday. If you have a prayer request, inbox us. We will get right back to you. Um, so that is it for uh, tonight. I think I, I covered everything uh, tonight. If you do have a prayer request, I'm sorry. Uh, you can uh, leave it up. I am looking on Facebook. I don't see any prayer requests. Um, uh, but if you do have a prayer request, we will get back with you. Thank you guys for joining. And Father God, we just coming to you to say thank you, Father God. We thank you for this. I'm going to call it iron sharpening iron session. We have these regularly amongst the partners, but even this Bible study was a, a place and a time that we can come together, Father God, and, and a, 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 do an assessment on the gifts, Father God. And even on tonight, Father God, some of us have noticed that we're growing in you. Some of us have noticed that our gifts are even shifting. And I thank you that even they're shifting because the atmosphere has shifted. The time in this earth is changing and we are aligning spiritually to what you are doing in the earth realm, Father God. Father God, if any time for the gifts to arise, Father God, the time is now, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And this has been training ground, Father God. Father God, for when Father God, we come up out this quarantine, Father God, and we're able to go out, Father God. And even now, Father God, the world is looking, they're thirsty, they're hungry, Father God, for a word from the Lord, from a demonstration of God. We are your hands and we are your feet and the earth. Hallelujah. We are those chosen vessels, Father God, in the earth realm. Father God, and Father God, you have equipped us with gifts. They come from you. They belong to you. So Father God, we decree and declare that we will be good stewards over the gifts that you have given us, Father God. And we praise you for the ultimate gift, which is your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, for he did die. 
for us so that we may have eternal life. But not only just eternal life, he left us with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, Father God, hallelujah, on this journey, Father God. So we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you, Father God, in our lives, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you in our lives and we feel the activation even more so father god we feel the fire shut up in our bones yet this fire hallelujah wasn't just meant to consume us yet it was given to ignite hallelujah it was given to ignite oh. hallelujah and that's what i speak ignite Hallelujah. Everybody that's under my voice, ignite. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, don't you realize that you are carrying the gift of the Holy Spirit, the consuming fire of God. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare that this ministry will ignite hallelujah, ignite the places that you send us individually, hallelujah, and corporately. We love you, Father God, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. 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 We thank amen. you for joining amen. us on tonight. I bless all of you guys. We will see you next week, this time, 7 o'clock, right here on WCM Interactive. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.